Hello everybody, uh, Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody is doing okay. Hope that to this point you are having a great start to your week. You're having a great start to your year and things are progressing. Remember what I always say, no matter what's going on right now, if you're still breathing, you're still in the fight. Look, <clears throat> I want to talk to you about uh, male health, men's health, uh, man, state of mind, you know, one of the things that I've been talking about a lot lately, uh, especially when it comes to black men, is mental health and the lack of, number one, uh, the lack of mental health resources available uh, for black men, but also the unwillingness of black men to deal with and acknowledge that certain issues exist. Some of these things we really need to deal with. And in my work, there's this area of study uh, that focuses on uh, longevity and it, it, it delves into the question of why, especially in Western culture, women outlive men and especially when it comes to black women versus black men. But in general, regardless of race, in the Western culture especially, but in most uh, highly industrialized places, women outlive men significantly. Now, there are some contributing factors that need to be taken into place. Uh, men tend to be naturally more aggressive, thus more violent, and so men tend to die from violent death, death, deaths at a higher rate than women, especially in the black community. Uh, when men tend to die at war at a higher rate than women. And so that, 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 that makes up for a certain percentage of that particular uh, dynamic where we talk about women outliving men. But what we find in the studies is that there is a phenomenon that is of a greater impact and greater influence. Uh, and it's regardless to race, but obviously plays a role within the black community as well. But just speaking from a general sense uh, and then being able to apply what's said uh, across the board, but also uniquely to the black experience. But what we find is there's this hormone uh, that is produced by the pituitary gland called oxytocin. And oxytocin, one of the one of the functions of oxytocin is the down regulation of the sympathetic nervous system. The sympathetic nervous system is uh, responsible for the triggering of the fight or flight. And, you know, now they've added freeze, fight, flight, or freeze stress response, uh, which is a fear response. But now it's triggered by almost anything that's highly stressful. Um, and that the, the thing with the flight or flight response is if it's triggered because you're about to get an accident and you swerve out or is it triggered because a dog is running up on you and you need to get away if it's triggered because someone pulls a gun and starts shooting well what happens is whether it's a minute whether it's five minutes once the threat is removed the fight or flight threat response starts to dissipate and so what happens in the fight or flight response is the uh, adrenal gland produces two predominant hormones uh, in response to this, but adrenaline and cortisol. So what happens is the heart rate starts to rise, the prefrontal lobe or the uh, prefrontal cortex of the brain, the executive functioning of the brain uh, that is uh, designed for reasoning, um, impulse control, rationale, most of all of your executive functions is in the prefrontal cortex. That is shut down. The blood flow, which is roughly about 30% of the total blood flow and oxygen uh, in the body at any given time is present in the prefrontal cortex when the brain is conscious and actively working. So that is shut down and that blood is redirected to your extremities. Why? So that you can fight or run. Uh, that's what fight or flight is. And so it's to give you more strength, more power, more energy and endurance to get through the situation. Um, now, what happens is in prolonged chronic stress, just the ongoing threat, the always, the body's uneasy, the, the, the adrenal gland is constantly producing, uh, especially cortisol, 
adrenaline and cortisol, but especially cortisol, and cortisol in the body over time starts to attack the body. It starts to attack uh, major organs like kidneys, the heart, uh, arteries, the uh, pancreas, the liver. It's, it's attacking these organs and it's also impacting the immune system. Um, and so all these things are negatively affected by this constant presence of cortisol. Well, when oxytocin is present, the down regulation of that uh, entire function of the sympathetic nervous system to produce the uh, to produce the uh, fight or flight response is reduced. So what we find is in women, they have this thing called tend and befriend. Now, what tend to befriend is, is a social phenomenon that is expressed across genders in most instances, but definitely highly uh, frequent in experiences in the Western culture, where when women get stressed out, they tend to rally. They rally with one another. Girl, call so-and-so, call so-and-so. And before you know it, everybody's getting together and it's a girl's night out thing. Everybody's going to rally to the response of whoever's going through. Uh, ten, in, 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 in the flip side of that is, well, the, res, the re, uh, response to that or the result of this tend to befriend is the production of oxytocin through the pituitary gland. So, as, so what actually happens is, even though there's a stressful moment, She's going out, she's hooking up with her friends, and there's this immediate physiological, neurobiological response to her stressful situation. So it's dealing, she can have, her and her husband can be going through the same thing. She's going to go hang out with her friends. He's going to do what? Nine times out of ten. I got it. I'm good. I got it. Uh, you know, you want me to call your brother? No, I'm good. Do you want me to call your daddy? No, I'm good. Uh, I got it. I, I, I'm, I'm going to work it through. I'm going to get through it. And that isolation doesn't allow men to take advantage of that tend and befriend uh, process in which oxytocin, oxytocin is created within the, uh, well, and released into the bloodstream. So in essence, our unwillingness as men, and then you got to understand that this isn't a biological uh, precipitation. This isn't because we are built to isolate ourselves. It's a socialized mindset because there are places in the world, and they prove out this very study, there are places in the world where men literally, generally socialize. Uh, I want to say uh, Samania, the island of Samania. Uh, is one place, a lot of uh, Eastern Asian places, Western Asian places, where men literally come together and have these bonds where they connect and operate. They actually live equally as long or longer than women in these areas. Uh, so many, I know is one where the men actually live as long or longer than the women. And it's because, real simply put, they know how to bond. They know how to come together. One of the reasons that I spend so much time uh, hanging out with the guys at the Cigar Lounge, where I'm at right now, is because it's a bonding time. But it's a time that you can sit down and share. It's a time that you can develop a cohesiveness that isn't what we normally see. We normally can bond for sporting events. We'll come together and, and, and do sporting events and all that. But the things where we have to admit our vulnerabilities, where we have to admit there's something happening in our lives that we don't totally have a grasp on, where something is necessary and have that brotherly response, to have that rally. Uh, we need to create that. We need to be aware of that. And my sisters and ladies and women, uh, encourage, even though you're going to get pushback. Now, I don't need nobody. No, I don't want nobody in my business. All of this push, encourage, lift. Because, yes, you're there. And, yes, you're giving uh, some insight. But that bonding experience, that tend and befriend nurturing that is so 
present. And here's the beautiful thing about this study. It's not just that there's this arbitrary idea that if you, you got friends and you hang out with your friends when stuff get rough, you live longer. Here's the thing, that the study show that the more women get together, the more in number there are that get together, the more frequently they do it, the longer they live. And this isn't some gender uh, exclusive type situation. This also applies to men. The thing is, we as men don't tend to do it. So my challenge again is that we've got to start loving on one another. We have to start creating spaces, even though it's uncomfortable, because we are socialized into this isolation. We are socialized into this, I've got it, uh, hyper-masculine uh, response to things, this hyper-masculine state of being, this bravado, this I've got to show how tough I am situation. And at the end of the day, it's taking years off of our life and the quality of our end years are bad because our health has declined because that's what cortisol and consistent large amounts in the bloodstream over time will do to you. It will diminish your health in a number of different ways, not to men, uh, mention other ways that genetically you are being attacked and assaulted. And I talk about this a lot when I'm lecturing on epigenetics. And so I just wanted to take some time to really really put this home because it's easy to sit up and get off into um, it's to get off into all the other things that are going on on a socioeconomic level on a political level and all these other things that we love to talk about that are necessary for us to talk about it's easy to get off on that and lose sight of the things that are really truly important as men one of our greatest responsibilities that we seem to lose sight of is to be present over the long term for our families to be patriarchs, to be uh, voices of wisdom to the younger generations that are coming along. But in order to do that, we have to be here. And so we need to be present long after 35, 45, 55, and 65. And that's a problem now. We're losing so many people, and I'm looking at so many different friends that we are losing because we aren't taking care of ourselves. And it's not just our diet. Uh, it's not just exercise. Those are immensely important. But it's love, friendship, creating environments of peace that we are failing to create and do and experience in any grand, uh, uh, in any grand fashion. So again, I'm going to really and truly encourage all of you. I'm going to encourage my, 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 my sisters and the women out there to encourage your sons, encourage your brothers, encourage your husbands and boyfriends to create circles and environments of friendship that embrace them, that uh, support them, that will rally around them with things become uh, shaky and scary and, and, and frustrating and disappointing it, it, and let them know it's okay to be human. Uh, with that being said, look, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. I uh, appreciate you letting me take up your time. Um, you guys have an unbelievable and remarkable day. As I always say, I live my life on full so that when I leave this place, I die on E and I'm challenging everyone to do the same. Uh, don't forget to click the like button, click the share button. Uh, click the subscribe button, look in the description box and see some of the things and information that's there for you. On that note, I'm going to get ready to get out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of your day. Thank you.